As a lot of you guys might have figured out by now, there is some tomfoolery going on in Penacani. So much so that even the family is starting to wonder who's behind all of these senseless killings. Yes, I received the report that death had taken some of them. Perhaps someone was behind it. However, it seems as if they are playing catch-up, because right at the start of our journey into Penacani, Himiko and Wells already suspected there may have been a third party involved in all the events of Penacani, due to a hidden message that was included in the watchmaker's invite. Well, suggested that the family might not have even been the ones to have sent the invites and are hiding things from us. Are you saying you suspect that the family did not send the invite and is hiding something from us? It's possible. The fact that the family sent out invites to the other factions is already unusual, and your discovery confirms that there could be a third party involved. Uh, following our run-in with the meme and the revelation that Penacani is sinking into the memory zone, Wells and Himiko became more confident with this theory, surmising that someone is responsible for all the mishaps on Penacani with the goal of weakening the family's holds on Penacani. Someone is drawing in external influences to distract and disrupt the family's control over Panacone. Either that, or the family has been forced to seek outside aid surreptitiously for self-preservation. But from the encrypted message on the invite and the family's reaction, the former is more likely. Which also means that the one who sent out the encrypted nameless message and the mastermind behind the anomaly are on the same side. Maybe even the same person. But who is this person or persons that's just straight killing everyone in Penacani? Well, one, one reasonable answer could be the rest of the Everflame Mansion seeking retribution for the alleged death of Ifrit. However, there are some things to keep in mind in regards to this. Towards the end of the quest, the Venturine tells us the Everflame Mansion were invited to Penacani. <laughs> Why am I saying Pentecotti so many times? But while on their way here, their leader, Duke Inferno, was killed by someone Avenzarine claimed to be Acheron, who then swiped the invite and showed up to Pentecotti in turn. Yesterday, a lot of people pointed out it's odd that Acheron was able to check into the hotel when she should not have been able to because her name wasn't in the system. You know, yesterday, some of the more diligent among us pointed out that I missed one of the red dialogues, and it's probably the most important one because as it turns out, it tells us that her name not being in the system doesn't matter when it comes to Acheron because she is seemingly able to get whatever she wants. So what do I mean by this? Well, when we run into Acheron in the memory zone and Black Swan asks us what we think of Acheron teaming up with us, you are either, like me, a weak will, die enjoying, leg loving female simp who hit yes with no hesitation and was elated when you got to hear her say thanks because that's how your life is. <laughs> or you were, you were God's strongest warrior who knew there was some bullshit going on here press no only for this to happen. Hmm. What do you think? Sorry, I couldn't hear you clearly. Do you repeat that? Sorry, I couldn't hear you clearly. Do you repeat that? What's going on? That weird feeling is back again. Thank you. I'm truly grateful. Robbed of your free will, ain't that a bitch? <laughs> Regardless, the point I'm trying to make here is I'd imagine she hit the hotel clerk with a, sorry, I couldn't hear you clearly, could you repeat that? Until she was able to check in. Matters of Acheron's fuckery aside, is Ifrit really dead? And if he is in actuality dead, was it wholly unexpected? I ask this due to the Myriad trailer, which speaks interestingly of death and goes completely against the notion that they disband should anyone die. What if we all end up dead? Since when have those on the path of destruction feared death? Still, it is wise to plan ahead, Father. What is our fallback if things become perilous? Fallback? Such a thing does not exist. Destruction is brave and heroic. To cling to life is to delay in cowardice. 
Akash quite plainly puts it that those on the path of destruction do not fear death. I mean, sure, Constance asks, what if we all end up dead? But like, come on, just look at just look at her eyes. She's crazy, dog. She, she she looks like she eats kids. It's good to eat me. If Rit then scoffs at Dubra asking about a fallback plan and says falling back isn't an option. Destruction is brave and heroic, and clinging to life is cowardice. And I mean. Katarina was just was just down to do this as a solo mission. So again, I ask, does this bunch really seem like the type to just disband, even if Ifrit were the one to die? They've clearly made their feelings on death well known, and barring Dubra, don't seem like the type to let it hinder them. On the note of Dubra, however, I found it interesting how Duke Inferno said this to her. Dubra, I set your form alight and taught you mastery of the blade. Temper it with sulfur made the elation and let the performer's blood and tears pour into the abyss as you wish father it's interesting how he tasked her with letting the performer's blood and tears pour into the abyss and oh what do you know? Penacani's most renowned performer is dead, after suffering a stab wound to the chest, and who happens to be the only one with a blade on the Everflame Mansion, a scythe, no less, heralding death, Dubra. Oh, while well, yes, Sunday did suggest the meme might have been the one that killed a Robin, this doesn't really explain how Robin's body was somehow able to linger after her death in a way that could have allowed for her blood and tears to pour into the abyss. However, there are some problems with the Everflame Mansion being the ones behind everything in Penacani and its timing. Given they also received an invite, and the invite themselves were of suspect origins, as opposed to them being the ones operating behind the scenes, it's more likely they are the external factors brought in by the person behind the scenes. However, can they even be considered external factors then if they were invited to the planet? Uh, putting aside the Everflame Mansion, one thing I thought was extremely odd was how Sparkle somehow knew that Firefly had died. Somehow, a nightmare called death has descended upon Penacone striking indiscriminately, bringing spiritual death to all equally. In the utopian dreamscape envisioned by the family, such sorrowful incidents shouldn't arise. It profoundly undermines the equilibrium and serenity of the dreamscape. How detestable. I can't believe this has happened. Was someone killed again? Nothing in Sunday's statement gives away how many people died or even the time span between the deaths, yet Sparkle asks if someone was killed again, indicating she knew Firefly had died, and obviously she knew Robin had died because she's dressed up as Robin. <laughs> it makes sense Sunday knows of these deaths given he's a part of the family and they probably have eyes and ears everywhere, but how does Sparkle know that both Firefly and Robin died? Now, I don't think she killed them, she just... She, she just seems like she's here to troll more than anything else. But is she really this well connected, or is it she knows way more than she's letting on? I'm a bit shocked Sunday doesn't even question how she came to learn of these deaths, given it sounds like he himself just learned of them not too long ago. Aventurine personally believes that Acheron has some culpability in all this, especially Firefly's death, but that doesn't sit well with me either. The person behind all this is someone who knows the truth of Penacani, knows the secret the family wants hidden, and wanted to gather everyone. Honest to God, I'm expecting Fooly to just show up any point now with pen and paper just to show everyone they're fucked. I don't think it's someone we've met so far, but I also don't think it's going to be a complete random. There is the case of Misha and Mikael. Ultimately, I, I think the Everflame Mansion is behind some of what's going on in Penacani, but I don't think they're the ultimate masterminds. You mean to tell me, right before Penacani, we had a Doctor Ratio quest introducing to us Duke Inferno, then a trailer showing us the rest of the Everflame Mansion, just to have him scurry off right before Penacani starts? Nah, that's bait, bro. That is bait. Bait. Another angle to consider is Aventurine and Dr. Ratio, who seem to be working together at the start. Ratio knows of Aventurine trying to reclaim Penacani for the IPC, but became annoyed upon learning that the Aventurine stone was taken by the family. Given he said he was going back to the IPC to tell them Aventurine had lost the stone, it sounds as if the IPC itself are the ones who want Penacani back and not just Aventurine. So this makes me wonder if Diamond or someone higher up at the IPC like Targon is the one who's acting as the mastermind. For those unaware, Diamond is the head of the Strategic Investment Department and an emanator of preservation. He is also the one who both Topaz and Aventurine report to. He is the one who gave this mission to Aventurine, and so it could be upon hearing of Aventurine losing the stone, decided more drastic measure needed to be taken. The only problem with any of the higher-ups at the IPC getting involved is that Aventurine himself said the family is on high alert for the IPC, doing everything in their power from stopping the IPC, 
getting involved in any role other than a guest, which is why Aventurine's baggage was searched. So at the end of the day, eh, who knows? I mean, I'm still privy to, you know, the Everflame Mansion being involved. Just because I want to play as Constance, man, please! <laughs> you can't do this to me.